Hi everyone, my name is Hossein Ranema. I'm founder and CEO of Flybits and a visiting professor at MIT Media Lab. I started Flybits when I was a graduate student. The focus of my work was around this notion of contextual computing. How do we make information relevant for people, not just by sensing their location and pushing them relevant coupons, but truly understanding their situation and context and deliver a more personalized experience for them across a fleet of devices. Over the past few years, we are talking to a lot of CIOs and chief digital officers, and they are all seeing the advent of these AI-driven concierge services, especially in the consumer market. Alexa on Amazon, Cortana on Microsoft, Siri on Apple, Google now on Android, so the question they have is that, how do I bring that into my enterprise setting? How do I go from having tens or hundreds of apps to having one service that can behave based on the situation of my, of my users? So a lot of the work that we have been doing uh, over the past years was to enable people to create these contextual experiences, not just semantic computing experts, or AI engineers. We try to encapsulate that, hide that, and empower people to use AI and contextualization as a service. A lot of these executives and researchers are interested to bring a lot of data from across different sources and be able to create new decisions out of them. The way we do this at Flybits is that we aggregate data from across different sources. So we are bringing public data, proprietary data, and personal data. And then we allow people to use a context hub or an information repository to curate new experiences for their audience in a very omni-channel way. It shouldn't matter if you're building an experience for a, a mobile device or a wearable or an IoT device. We take care of that complexity. What we have seen so far is that these data are very, very fragmented. They are all following different types of data structure. So if you have a frozen set of requirements to build these applications, it's fine. But we are in an era that almost every day there is a new data stream. Every few months, Apple puts a new sensor in your phone. So how does your software engineering paradigms and software design patterns can scale. We have seen super cool use cases coming from business, from chief digital officers, but they have challenges bring them to the market because IT and software engineers cannot keep up with the advent of new data. So if I really summarize what Flybits does, we simplify that process. We hide the complexity of AI and machine learning and we give very intuitive tools so even a marketing intern can create new, these types of experiences. Let me show you some real deployed examples. We work a lot in banking. One of our customers, TD Bank, actually went live for millions of users to create a financial concierge service. Yes, they can use, you can use their app to check account balances or paying bills, but now, it's very interesting for us that they are using Flybits to actually build a smart connected city solution. Let me give you some real examples. If you're looking for a new property to purchase, and if you go and spend some time there, you will get a pre-approved mortgage offer on your device. If, you, if your mortgage is up for renewal within 90 days, and if you have availability in your calendar and you're walking, you get a personalized notification inviting you to come to the branch. So it's very good for us to see that now research literature that we saw in UbiComp and pervasive computing is now coming to the market. An intern is actually coming up with a lot of these concierge services and building it for their customers. Vodafone, one of our key investors, is using it to create a more connected campus for their headquarter in the UK. So in this case, if you use their mobile service, if you go there as a guest, 
you get your free Wi-Fi access, a free coffee coupon, and the person that you are meeting it will get notified because they have beacons instrumented in the lobby. But if you go there as a staff member, now you can book a meeting room or you can find a colleague or see what type of food is being offered in the canteen. So there is now one service that is behaving differently based on the context of the user. We work with security companies, so our context engine, for example, is capable of understanding and inferring a security breach at a network, and if you are, let's say, at a hotel that has its network breached, and if you try to connect to a banking platform, it actually notifies you that this may not be a good idea. So at every second, we are processing a lot of data, and we enable organizations to create these very targeted personalized contextual experiences on a fleet of devices, especially mobile phones. One of the key retailers in the UK are using our system to, let's say, notify people if it's raining and if they are a VIP customer, they actually launch an Uber service for them through the app so that they can go to work more effectively. It's very interesting for us because now they are building an API ecosystem with the advent of these types of AI services. And it's not a developer who is building these services and experiences, it's a marketing person. It's someone who is just interested in use cases without much knowledge on semantic computing, ontologies, and machine learning. The way we do this is that we allow you to collect data from across different sources, from sensors, from wearables, even proprietary data coming from behind your firewall, aggregate them, unify them, and then use a decision-making canvas to create new experiences in your organization. And this is going to be a quick demo that I'm gonna show you at the end of my presentation. At the same time, we capture a lot of analytics from these data. It's not just about creating intervention on the mobile channel, it's also about learning from that data and predict from that data. Semantic and ontology is very important to understand the situation of the user. The behavior of your mobile phone should probably be different when you use it at home versus when you use it at an office versus when you're using it on board a train. How, how do you enable all applications to understand that situation? So we collect data, we model that data, we create semantic out of that data, and we enable that data to become more and more contextual. There will be a software development kit that anyone can use. You can enable any mobile channel with the Flybits SDK that gives you access to a context hub that allows you to create your decisions. And then there, the learning process starts with which these pluggable, learnable ontologies will start to evolve. So this is more like an ecosystem approach that we followed to make these experiences more effective. This is an infrastructure conference. So before, if you wanted to build a system like this, the architecture of your system would have looked something like this. Very monolithic, everything you wanted to change, you had to go change a bunch of other systems. But now, with the advent of microservice-based architectures, and new types of development platforms, an architecture of a context over a computing platform can look like this. Any situation can be defined using a graph of ontologies, a number of API inputs can be aggregated and processed, and then your situation can be inferred using different AI modules. Those green nodes that you see on my screen are machine learning nodes. For example, if you want to measure risks, you will use a Bayesian node. If you want to uh, deal with missing data, you can use falsification. So you no longer need to compare these tools together. You can basically create a pool of inference to make inference more and more effective for you. Let me use the rest of my time to very quickly show you how we can do this to make it more practical and tangible. So I'm going to switch to a demo. 
And this is an interface that I call it the experience studio. Let's say I want to create an experience for people who are in this room. I will go to my context hub, and let's say I will create a rule called the edge rule. Now let's say I want to target people who are walking in this room. I can capture that from across different sensors on your devices. I want to make sure that I'm not disturbing you if you are running out of battery. So I want to make sure you have enough battery power. Um, I also want to make sure I can target people who like Adele as a singer. That can come from your Spotify. And also, I want to target people differently in a rainy day versus a sunny day. Now, I'm capturing all of these data from different sources, and I build a rule. Now, when this rule is built, it's starting to learn from the behavior of all your devices. Now, I want to map this building and build a logic and semantic around it. So I'm going to build a zone around where we are. I'm going to define the ontology for this zone. It is an event, so your phone behavior will be based on an event ontology. I call it IBM Edge 2016. I will upload a logo. And now I am creating a new smart space in which the semantic and the logic of your device is understood in. Now, let's say I want to deliver a video to all your mobile devices when you're here. I drag and drop a video. I can point it to a content repository. So I can say IBM Edge and see what shows up. That is a video that I like. I can deliver it in different languages. And when I publish it, all of you, if you had that application or service, this would have showed up on your device automatically. But if you remember, we created a rule together called the edge rule. Now I'm going to associate that rule to that moment. So if you were not walking or if you had less battery power, this behavior would have been removed from your device. So our goal is to really enable everybody to build experiences. The future of the internet is very different than the internet that we have used. So far, we have used two-dimensional tools to build two-dimensional experiences on a display. A key feature of the new internet is that environment is your interface, not necessarily the display. Context will be a key driver of the new internet. The behavior of your application will change not just based on your location, but based on your context. And AI will be used as a service. Works that people like Marvin Minsky and others did, they all built the foundation for a time, as Jason mentioned, that AI is becoming exponentially available to everybody. So you can imagine an internet that exactly how the early days of internet happened, that people started to build web pages, as a medium of content delivery. Now there are mediums that AI semantic and environment is the new interface. And imagine entrepreneurs, researchers, and startups that are leveraging this new, eco new ecosystem to create their new ventures. Thank you very much.